hi everyone welcome to the next part of the tutorial reversing with hyper dvg in this part we're gonna talk about io debugging here is a brief outline of this session we're gonna see about external interrupts uh, you will see communicating with different peripherals port mapped io or pmio devices memory mapped io and then we compare pmio and mmio then we have a hands-on um, in which we monitor and modify IO ports for PS2 keyboard. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about external interrupts. This is the same topic that we also covered in the previous uh, session. We, we, in previous sessions, we said how interrupts are handled uh, in processor and how a uh, processor and how hyper dvg can intercept interrupts and then we, and then perform modification and uh, we, we saw that it's possible to uh, do this task by using bang interrupt command for example in most of the cases when external devices any external devices that wants to notify the processor that something is happening in that special device then it creates the interrupt and uh, this way it notifies the processor for example when we press a key on uh, our keyboard then uh, trapped is invoked and it's the responsibility of the processor to handle the keyboard and, uh, and it just notifies the operating system and everything is handled inside the operating system so most of the times when the interrupt is received it's the responsibility of APIC device to handle and and uh, del deliver it uh, to the processor and it's, and we have two types of APIC devices x2 APIC and x APIC devices which is an older version first one handles through MSR registers and the second one or x APIC is handled by base address by a physical address as hyper dvg is a hypervisor level debugger then it's notified about the interrupts before the operating system so it's it, it, in this stage we could decide whether we want to pass the interrupt to the operating system or we can handle it or ignore it without re-injecting the event or the interrupt to the operating system now let's see some of the basic con concepts relating to the communication of the peripherals in hyper dvg for intercepting the communication there are two options uh, the first option is to manage external devices by uh, intercepting interrupts for example we got notified whenever a device wants to connect to the operating system to send an input or an output this is done by using the interrupt command and there are also other possible ways of uh, handling or debugging io uh, devices basically i want to generally speak about it that we have two types of communication between the devices and the processor it is either port mapped io or pmio or memory mapped io or mmio uh, and th this methods are responsible for uh, performing input and output and communicating between different peripherals processors and uh, the operating system so uh, if the devices in most of the devices that are connected through the pcie uh, or pci uh, these devices generally use memory mapped io and the initial configuration of these devices are done by using PMIO. MMIO is the preferred uh, method in x86 based processors. The thing is that AMD did not, uh, for, for the 64 bit processor, AMD did not extend the IO port instructions when defining the new x86 architecture. Uh, now let's see uh, port mapped IO or PMIO in detail. Port mapped IO, which is also called isolated IO, use two instructions for performing IO operations. These instructions are in and out. And these instructions have uh, several variants. Uh, so some of them copy one byte, two byte, or four bytes. It's done between EAX and a special port. Hyper DVG, on the other hand, exports this uh, functionality or uh, make the deb debugging of the IO ports possible by using two commands, IO in or bang IO in, and 
bang or exclamation mark i o out the first one is used for intercepting in instructions and the second one is used for intercepting out instructions and we could use the script engine here to notify about the about this communication between peripherals at, uh, even before the operating system and perform some uh, changes and uh, the operating system will never know that the input or output is modified. And here is a simple script that shows where, for example, this port, IO port is read by using a simple printf in the script engine. Other than that PMIO, we, have, we also have MMIO here or memory mapped IO devices. Memory is not just ram addresses and uh, the memory itself is occupied by ram and a small fraction of total address spaces are relating to the uh, processor uh, the reminder of the memory itself is used for mmio devices including the pci and pcie devices and the processor routes these uh, accesses to these addresses uh, by configuring appropriate device registers whenever the processor wants to enumerate the bios or the operating system uh, wants to configure this space uh, at the initialization at this point there is a special way to access uh, the devices and it's called pci configuration address space in this way two io two pmio ports which you can see its address here are used to access the configuration space and later it's the responsibility of the either bios or the operating system to set up the mmio ranges so in a typical operating system firmware or bios uh, queries all the, uh, the pci buses at the start time uh, at the startup time by using pci configuration space and uh, find the devices present and also configure the system resources like memory space ios space interrupt lines and etc then it uh, allocates the resource and tells the device about its allocation so in general pca configuration space also co contains a small amount of device type information helps the operating system to choose the appropriate device device the device driver for it and also has MMIO is preferred over PMIO, as we mentioned it before. And the, the reason for that is uh, because the instructions that perform port mapped IO are limited to just one instruction. You can you can only have EAX, AX, or AL, or just one register for these PMIO instructions. And the only registers that the data can be moved uh, in and out is uh, byte sized immediate value in the instruction or a value that is uh, in DX register which determines which port is the source or the destination port for this PMIO instruction to transfer the data and uh, all of the general purpose uh, registers can can be used to receive uh, or send the data in for, uh, on the other hand because uh, in uh, memory map IO all of the general purpose registers can be used uh, for uh, sending and receiving data from and into memory so uh, memory mapped io uses fewer instructions and and uh, ultimately it can run faster than io or pmio if you want to just perform some uh, io debugging with mmio devices you can uh, use the old monitor command which is responsible for handling io debugging for mmio devices and also if you want to just see the base address for different devices or the base physical address for uh, di different devices or where the device address is mapped into the memory you can, there are also some resources i will try to introduce some of these devices later in this slides but uh, generally we can see that for example this device is allocated and mapped to the address shown in the picture now let's compare pmio and mmio devices for pmio or isolated io different address spaces are used for computer memory and micro device and micro devices have a dedicated address space while in uh, memory mapped io or mmio the same address is used for both memory and io devices in case of pmio separate con control unit and control 
instructions are used uh, in case of IO devices and uh, in MMIO control units and instructions are same for memory and IO devices. PMIO has a more complex and costlier than memory uh, mapped IO as more buses are needed while in MMIO it's easier to build and cheaper and cheap because uh, it's less complex. The entire address space can be used by memory as IO devices have separate I uh, address spaces in uh, PMIO while in MMIO some parts of address space of computer memory is consumed by IO devices devices as address space is shared. For the PMIO computer memory and IO devices use different control instructions for read and write for example in or out instructions are used while in MMIO computer memory and IO devices can both use the same set of read and write instructions them use move instructions for example separate control bus is used for the computer memory and io devices for pmio in the same address and uh, data bus are used and while in mmio address data and control bus are same for memory and io devices now let's see an example of how we can uh, analyze and mo modify the codes relating to a pc ps2 keyboard actually ps2 keyboards are some uh, old versions of keyboards that are currently not used but i think it's it, it would be really good for an example because it's simple the protocol is simple and easy to understand uh, and uh, we can we go after that we could extend our knowledge to perform the debugging of more complex io devices so let's see I just noticed that in most of the uh, VMware versions, they use uh, they use a PS2 keyboard. They still use for for the emulation. They use PS2 keyboard. So let's again uh, turn on uh, the WinDBG in order to disable the driver signature enforcement and see the VMware workstation uh, in VMware workstation we could also use system information uh, system information in hardware resources, there are IRQ lines and IO devices. As you can see here, IRQ1 is used for standard PS2 keyboards. And if we go to the IO uh, resources, uh, we could see different uh, IO resources that are used for the system. And one of them is of course ps2 keyboard which are which is uh, available on this special port 60 port uh, in hex format and 64 uh, in also in hex format so we could use it as a starting point to see how these uh, ps2 keyboards work so i uh, just I try to connect to HyperDVG. I run it from the source code. Uh, <clears throat> perform debugging. Connecting to the serial port. This time I use debug version. Um, well, we know after uh, performing the synchronization, I just try to uh, monitor, monitor, uh, IO monitor this address 60 in hex format to see what happens. Uh, so I use, uh, if, we, if we see the help of IO in command. It gets the port address uh, and process ID and different items related to the events, but we're only interested in port address. 
and so I try to run IO in in 60 port address in hex format. Everything in Hyper UG is in hex format. I'll continue the debugging and now perform some uh, pressing some keys here and everything just halts. So let's just come back to the VM. I will put it here. Uh, so as we can see, uh, this address is able to read data from the keyboard. Uh, it's in UM bus driver, and this is the function. So let's see this function by using the U command. We want to disassemble this address, and as we can see here, uh, it seems to be a simple function that only performs uh, in and a simple return after in instruction is executed. So, uh, this is the address. Uh, this this is the address that we we are interested in intercepting. Uh, um, we have several options here. We could. Uh, intercept interrupts uh, or for example uh, or also we can also use in instruction uh, to just modify the results of in instruction there's also another option which might be also uh, which might be a better option to just put a simple uh, ept hook on this address because after running this instruction then and when it when the processor wants to execute the next instructions already has the uh, value of the input to the keyword uh, <clears throat> uh both of these ways can be used now let's use the second uh, option here i uh, already uh, provide some um, resources here and the route the scripts you can see the script on the tutorial uh, no, no, no. uh this uh, this is a really good resource about it it's explaining different intros IRQ lines uh, I think it's better to read it if you you, you want to get uh, familiar with ps2 keywords and, and uh, the how general intra lines work on x86 processor and also another resource which explains uh, directly about ps2 keyboards uh, is this uh, it also provides information about different uh, code sets or scan code sets of these ps2 keyboards so uh, I just try to put a simple EPT hook on this address because after this address AL contains the scan code. And there are two scan codes for PS2 keywords. Uh, both of them are mentioned here, but VMware Workstation uses the first uh, or emulates the keyword in the first scan code set. So uh we, we, we simply write a simple s script to just print the uh code or print the different keys that are pressed we could also it's it's somehow like a simple key lagger hypervisor based key lagger uh that is notified about the about pressing of a key before even uh, the operating system is notified so i just use this simple printf here and print al instruction Before that, I try to clear all um, events.
Uh, no, I run uh, the target debuggy and uh, try to press some keys here. Like hello, as we can see, uh, by entering any keys, uh, we could see how it's pressed and see the key code here. Uh, no, no, I just try to. Uh, this is this can be a simple hypervisor based key lagger. I try to just uh, clear all uh, events. Uh, no, let's just try to manipulate it by, uh, for example, uh. when uh, let's see when q or uh, i don't know maybe when scan code one for example when uh, d when d is pressed then uh, the scan code for it would be 0x20 so I'll try to modify it uh, to another code. So, uh, we just uh, show that a key is pressed, the simple if statement and AL equals to zero x 20. Then we will change the AL to uh, for example, J, we will change it to J. Uh, and it's 24. So let's also, there, there are also, uh, I, I, I uh, don't want to explain this particle in detail, but there is on, uh, there is a, a press key and after that a released key uh, is sent. So we will also try to change the release key. So if D is uh, release yeah. for the first scan code, then zero uh, x a is sent. So if uh, zero if the key code is equals to zero x a zero, then we will change it to. Zero uh, x a four because we want to change the d with j. Zero uh, x a four. Yeah, that should be fine. Also, let's uh, print some keys here. Like d is press. Now let's run this script. Uh, I try to just uh, because uh, we are using the same snapshot. I think it's better to rerun uh, the snapshot. But anyway, let's just try to return to the controller here. I try to rerun the snapshot. Again, connect it because because the addresses are not changed here. just waiting uh, because when UG wants to connect uh, it's connected try we will try again and now the synchronization is performed so let's just copy 
the same script. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we can see here, when A is pressed, then we will see how the key press uh, instructions here. But if anyway, I press D, then it's change. Then it's change to J. Like I'm currently pressing D, and you can see that it's D press. But uh, meanwhile, uh, G is shown here. Uh, J is shown here. Excuse me. Uh, and if I press J, then it's just like a regular instructions. But when I press D here. Uh, it changes to J. So this was a simple uh, example of how we can use HyperDBG to uh, use uh, to debug different I/O devices. We could extend our knowledge and combine it with a script engine to perform more complex scenarios. This was just a simple case that shows how you can perform key logging by a hypervisor, even modifying the resources, uh, the physical resources. Uh, in summary, uh, and in this section, we see how external interrupts uh, are used as a way to communicate, to notify the processor about different events. And we will see, we also saw different ways of communication between peripherals like PMIO and MMIO and the differences between these two methods. And finally, in the hands-on section, uh, we monitor ports uh, for PS2 keyboards and wrote a simple script to change some of the keys in the keyboard. Before finishing, as I mentioned before, some tools here that used to show the base address for MMIO devices, the tools that are used in devices, HW info. Also, some of the description is derived from this uh, source. So nothing more. Thanks for watching and see you in the next section.